um, given that it is an open source project. Uh, the following slides kind of represent what we've been able to achieve in house uh, with a minimum amount of time and effort. Uh, but anyway, um, you'll notice that we tried not just to include um, we tried not just to include stuff of our own, but we tried to integrate a lot of third party software as well. So you can see how the framework allows for that extensibility that we talked about earlier. Uh, okay, so we watched the demo. We, uh, we looked at Snort as a collector in the context of SMTP traffic, but we've also got web and DNS builds. Um, the reason that we Snort is good for this sort of thing is that one, it's an easy way to get stuff off the wire, and two, it's really easy to incorporate. Um, if you're also if you're interested in file fuzzing and more of a, an attack research oriented kind of person, um, we've got a custom post mortem debugger. What that'll do is it actually track applications as they crash and send the variant of the file through the dispatcher which caused the crash along with um, any context information. By context information here I mean um, the actual instruction which, uh, which it crashed on and the exploitability of that crash. So this has a number of really useful applications. Um, what it was originally intended for was as a sort of monitoring system for your client machine so that uh, if somebody opens a file that goes through the system undetected but actually accidentally causes a, or actually causes a crash, then all the information and context information surrounding that crash would get sent through the dispatcher and alert would be generated. However, if you're interested in file fuzzing uh, and have a, a, a fuzzing farm as we do, Another cool application is to have a set of machines that are uh, charged with doing a breadth first search approach to file fuzzing and then once they've found a crash, actually send that, uh, send that crash to another set of machines which are responsible for doing a depth first search uh, approach to fuzzing, allowing for a very, very efficient fuzzing system. And you, can also, you can also fuzz uh, your own kind of in-house software with this as well. All right, so here's an example of a third party program, a piece of software that we've integrated. Um, Dynamics PDF Dissector, uh, which is actually, hold on a second. So, so this is a great uh, third party piece of software that we've actually been using to um, break down our PDFs. But essentially, it's able to report known vulnerabilities, um, understand and, uh, and decode obfuscated and potentially malicious JavaScript, and also extract exploit shellcode for further analysis. Um, it's, it also provides uh, normalization such as JBIG2 decode and the uh, ability to hook known exploits. Um, it's extensible, which is the part that we like about it the most because we were able to use kind of their, their library to uh, create an interface with the framework um, and as, in particular the ability to hook JavaScript calls uh, allowed for some interesting results. Hooking the unescape call allowed us to uh, flag potential uh, shellcode and some simple pattern matching on large allocated heap blocks uh, can allow us to look for potential heap spray attempts. So any, any shellcode that you do find can be re-entered into the system and sent to a shellcode analyzer. And for this we used libmu. Um, for those who are not familiar with it, it is a library that offers x86 emulation and uh, shellcode detection and execution capabilities. So some noteworthy, noteworthy things that it can do is a Win32 API function call hooking. Um, you can also look for blocks that unwrap shellcode and, and profile shellcode behavior. The profiling of shellcode behavior is especially of interest to us because that allows us to generate alerts that can describe the intent of shellcode, the, uh, the, the goal that the shellcode was trying to achieve, what those instructions were intended to do, which is nice. All right. I've also got an Office Cat nugget and a Flash nugget. So uh, for those who are not in the know, uh, Office Cat is an in-house ongoing VRT um, command line utility that allows you to parse office files and look for known vulnerabilities in them. Um, it, was, it, was, it was probably our earliest attempt at addressing the whole client side uh, attack issue. Um, but anyway, we, we've, we've integrated that. Uh, actually our malware engineer, Alan Zidwemba, did a really great job on that. We've also got a flash nugget which can decompress and analyze flash and detect some, some known threats which is pretty cool. Clam AV. Uh, Clam AV is an open source antivirus that can analyze any format. It offers SIG based, pattern based detection in the form of 
NDB and LDB files, but you can actually al also write your own C code for it. It's got a bytecode interpreter, which I think is fairly, ne fairly, fairly recent. Um, one of the cool things about this is that uh, it's got an updatable signature DB, so you can update it in one of two ways. Either you can update it yourself, or you can run a utility called Fresh, Fresh Clam, which uh, will um, grab fresh signatures from from an online um, from an online database. Um, the cool thing about this is that it can further serve as uh, a collector and issue defense, defense updates. So if you found um, by some other means a file sent through the system to be bad, a signature can be generated on the fly for that and then added to the DB so that Clam will alert on any future, um, any future encounters with that file. Our, our own Alan Zito was also responsible for that. We also provide a deep alerting system. Um, it offers detailed context oriented data. So we talked about uh, stuff like timestamp, whole portions of the file, um, normalized pieces of the file, cleaned up JavaScript, um, you know, uh, source IPs, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, a lot of information is provided by the system. We've, um, the Multigo interface, we're actually, this is actually kind of still in progress, but if you're not familiar with, with it, it's a uh, self described as open source intelligence and forensics application. Um, it, uh, it actually data mines and aggregates information and uh, represents relationships between data in a, in a visual way. So we, we, uh, we're, we're kind of still in the progress of, of toying with that, but um, the cool thing about it is that we talked about those correlation nuggets earlier and this would be sort of the prime example of something that could potentially become a correlation nugget. And finally, uh, workstation nuggets. Workstation nuggets are basically just uh, a slick human interface to the system as a whole. So you can view existing alerts in the database. Um, you can check the status of nuggets across the system. You can also run a standardized report set. So if, you, if you've got like an 8 a.m. meeting and you have to report on a variety of things, you can essentially just sit down at your workstation nugget, um, look at only the data that you need, print out the report set, and you're done. And with that, we're going to talk a little bit about the API, which is the interface for programmers with the system. Okay. Ryan, you're too short. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, uh, so we're going to talk a little bit about the API. Uh, don't worry, I'm not going to put a bunch of code up here. However, I'm going to have some slides that at least has a function name. Uh, what we've, what we've tried that. Yeah, sorry. What we've tried to do is make sure that we take care of all the the basic tasks that need to be done. You know, we want you to be able to just do the things that are important. You know, think about what kind of data you're, you know, that goes into is and that goes out is. What data am I looking at? What data do I want to generate? So we take care of everything, including you know, opening up a network socket if you're going to receive data from the dispatcher. We take care of threading. We take care of all the interactions with the database. It's you know, we like I said. We want to make sure that all you have to do is deal with the data that you're getting and the data that you're trying to create or present. Uh, so, again, since nuggets are you know building blocks and the whole system is designed around the idea of building blocks, where you take you know individual pieces that are specialized and have them work together as a whole, we have some general functions. Register nugget tells the database, "Hey, I'm here." And this is, you know, this is my name, this is my UUID, and this is the kind of data that I'm either, you know, t either taking in or putting out. Uh, register handler is kind of more of a, a detection nugget function. It tells the, the, uh, it tells the, re the dispatcher what kind of data that it handles, and it is possible to have a single detection nugget handle multiple types of data. You just call register handler with a bunch of different function pointers to tell it what, kind, what functions to call if it gets the relevant type of data. Okay, so collection of detection nuggets. As I mentioned before in the demo, you know, we have the SMTP parser nugget, which is a detection nugget, but one of the key things it does is actually get data in, split it out into the little pieces and send it back, as all detection nuggets can do. So since that has this, you know, that's kind of the same idea of what a collection nugget would do, they both share send data and send metadata for providing data back to the system and the dispatcher. Uh, detection nuggets, of course, also have send alert, which, as you would expect, sends an alert that is then uh, handled by the dispatcher and sent to the output nuggets. Intelligence nuggets, they're more of a, uh, 
like I said before, it's not necessarily event data or alert data. It's just kind of data that we're adding that we want to be able to keep track of later in case we're trying to um, track something more, more intense. Uh, so as such, they are really interfaces for adding information to the database. Uh, the types of protocols that we have right now are email, web, and DNS, but uh, you know, more protocols are, are on the way. And if you have any other types of data that you want to put in there, it's really as simple as creating the schema for storing that data, creating a function for populating that schema, and you're, and you're on your way. Okay, what if you don't like C? Uh, well, shame on you, but if you want to use some sort of scripting language or something else other than C, we, we do cater to that. Uh, we actually, uh, I apologize, we don't actually have these uh, APIs available right now, but they're close. Uh, but Ruby, Python, and Perl. Uh, if you have any other uh, languages that you wanted to write nuggets in, Haskell, I guess, small talk, <laughs> uh, just create an API, just have the C wrapper. If it's available, it can be done. Okay. Uh, so, conclusion the Razorback system, you know, as I keep saying, it's very modular, it's very scalable. You can sit there and you can have individual machines that have you know, single tasks that they do. Or if you want to do a more smaller scale thing, you can have one machine that runs a bunch, bunch of things. You know, we really make it so that you're able to set it up however you want to do it. Uh, it really limitless possibilities and that's, you know, that's the goal. We provide a framework, you provide what kind of information you want to handle and how you want to handle it. So. I'm glad you guys are all excited. I know you guys want to go home and start writing some nuggets now. So, so uh, the different kinds of things that we need, uh, and again, this is open source. Everything's uh, GPL v2. It's the Nmap license. Uh, we, collection nuggets. We need additional protocols. You know, there's all sorts of protocols out there. We've you know we've only done a handful of them. Uh, more are coming, and you know, the more community involvement that we get, the faster we can really get this thing going and get it useful to not only you but everyone else. Uh, detection nuggets, there are tons and tons and tons of file types out there. We've only scratched the surface. Uh, as Ryan said, they're all crazy people, so the more people we can get to try to parse their, their craziness, the better. Uh, defense update nuggets, you know, if you have some device that needs to be updated, you know, the, we don't have every device out there. I mean, nobody does. So if you have a device that you use and it's something that you want to be able to update, uh, make sure that, you know, provide that feedback. And especially correlation nuggets, that is something that we definitely need help with. Uh, if you are an expert at data mining and you know, knowing how to take all these pieces of data and, and uh, you know, making something useful out of it, please, please get in contact with us. Um, you know, we're, we, we have a lot of stuff to do to correlation nuggets is not necessarily our strong point. Uh, as you can see, there's, uh, everything is all available on SourceForge. Uh, Razorback TM, notice the TM, there's, Razorback was already taken. Uh, that is the main project. And then there's Nugget Farm, which is the repository for all the nuggets for handling all the different pieces of data. Okay? And if you want to, you can also go to the SourceForge tracking system to see all the things we've screwed up and hopefully have fixed. Okay, so we'll get to questions. Um, there's various contact means. Uh, I'm Patrick Mullen. It's Ryan Penny. I want to point out uh, the Razorback team. Uh, that's the entire VRT has been working so hard on this. Uh, they've really put in a lot of effort. Um, Really proud of the team. So, anything to add, Ryan? Oh, oh, yes. Key. Important distinction. Remember, we are in version 0.1, not 1.0. Everything is a work in progress. Uh, there, things do work. Um, speed is not necessarily uh, the the primary goal while we're writing this code. Things usually work. Sometimes things are works for me, uh, but. We are, we're really at the groundwork, so you know the ground floor. People want to help out on any part. Greatly appreciated. Um, any questions? Uh, we have five minutes while we're here. Uh, we can tell more jokes, or if people have questions. Oh, okay. Just a real quick announcement: the track after this has been canceled. It's been replaced with Spot the Fed. So if you're staying for the next track, it's canceled. Unless you want to stay for Spot the Fed. You've got an extra 10 minutes, so. Okay. So, any questions? Uh, yes, sir. I didn't hear you mention anything about uh, security considerations. What if this is to get really popular and the clients and collectors and dispatchers start getting the big attack? Oh, that's. That. Okay. 
Okay, so the question.